A government has almost limitless opportunity to destroy people's lives. And this fresh-faced young chap managed to destroy more lives in Britain than could ever be thought possible in a British government. I'm Granny Opterix. So in 1997, the Labour Party came to power and it was full of smart metropolitans who were prepared to ditch their working class uh, their constituents uh, in favour of uh, latte sipping metropolitans in the more sophisticated areas of Islington. And Tony Blair was at the spearhead of one of these. And as far as I'm concerned, in almost every case, his governance has been one of style over substance. So it's very stylish, very smartly dressed, even somewhat radically dressed occasionally. And everyone, well, not me, but a lot of people thought he was absolutely marvellous, a sign of New Britain. He even changed the name of his party from Labour to New Labour. Didn't fool me, but it seems to have fooled a lot of people. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, here, this is an example of his ability to destroy lives. I mean, I'm not talking now about the immigration policies his cabinet brought in, which are also very dangerous and from which we are suffering yet today. No, I'm talking about this. And there are people suffering yet today over this as well. And uh, the worst is, these people are the backbones of our society. The postmasters, the postmistresses, paragons of virtue and uh, honesty. Now, obviously, there are going to be one or two bad apples there, but mostly solid citizens, people to whom the entire community uh, looks and trusts. And, and he, he managed to destroy that. Blair was told <laughs> scrapping the horizon would damage relations with Japan. So, oh yeah, Japan, far more important than the, the little people who aren't smart metropolitans like him. Uh, Former PM ordered officials to go ahead with new post office IT system, despite being told it was plagued with problems. So he knew there was a big problem with it, but he went ahead anyway. To be fair, he didn't know how it was going to destroy the postmasters, but if it was plagued with problem, it was going problems, it was going to have an effect on everybody, including people who if there was a problem, might have been uh, designated as having received money that they didn't. Uh, documents released by the Cabinet Office show that Sir Tony's decision came after Sir David Wright. Neither of those guys dis deserve to be called Sir in any way, right? Uh, Sir David Wright, the UK ambassador to Japan, warned that scrapping the deal would lead to the collapse of the Japanese-owned fir uh, firm building the system, and then it would have profound implications for bilateral ties with Tokyo. So what we are seeing here is a prime minister who's been told that Fujitsu have are marketing a program that doesn't work properly or well or reliably. And the ambassador says, look, if you ditch this, then Fujitsu could very well go under. Since, since when has Tony Blair been responsible for Fujitsu? Since when? He's responsible, or he was, for the people of this country. But no, Fujitsu's a lot smarter and the stuff they produce is all shiny. So he was worried about the British government pulling out of a, a business deal which would wreck a company in Japan. Now, uh, I, I want to ask you something now. If a company is so dependent on one business deal with the British government, do you think it's worthwhile supporting? Especially if it's a, com a company in a foreign country. So, Tony Blair turned out to have been the Prime Minister of Fujitsu. 
he was more concerned about them than he was about the people. Now, I am going to read out some sample cases of what happened to some of those people. But you have to remember this. A postmaster or a postmistress is one of the most respected people in any small com or medium-sized community, They're any neighbourhood. You, you give them money. You expect them to take care of it. They have to be solid citizens. They have to, they, they, uh, they give you your pension books if you're getting pensions. They uh, change money for you. They, they give you foreign currency calculated on current rates, all that sort of thing. They are some of the most, they are what was left of the respected people of our communities. We no longer uh, respect our, our local vicars too much, do we? And there aren't any bank managers left. Whom else do we have to respect? And when a postmaster is accused of fraud, this is a bit more than, you know, sort of naughty, naughty, you've got your hand caught in the till. No. Everybody in the neighbourhood is looking at that person. We gave him our trust. Look how he's betrayed us. That's apart from the financial repercussions. All of society. And then the post office is saying, no, we're not to blame. It's those people. They've been stealing from the system. They've been stealing from the neighbourhood money. And we have double checked it. There's no problem with us. It's them, him, her, whatever. Let's just get a timeline here. In 1999, the post office rolled out its uh, new shiny computer system, all modern and metropolitan, and Fujitsu. Stephen Bradshaw, a royal... Oh, well, that, that's one of the bullies. He was a Royal Mail transport worker and he became... Uh, he was given two weeks training and then he started going after all these, these people. Now, on another matter, just let's think of this. A man who's been given a little bit of power, and there are a few of them, he's just one example, a little bit of power keeps going after postmasters and postmistresses who've been caught stealing uh, by, uh, uh, according to the post office. But not just one or two here or there. Dozens of them all over the place. Don't you think that somebody like that with those years of experience, he'd been working there about 45 years or, or something, don't you think that he would have thought, hey, there's something wrong here? No, 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 because this was his little bit of power. He went in on these sub-postmasters with apparent glee. He used all sorts of language about them. He forced them hither and thither. Oh, this, this really probably gave, well, I'm sure this gave him a buzz. Anyway, so that's Stephen Bradshaw out the way, but he's just one, there are many of them. Shop, uh, so in uh, 2002, shopkeeper Baljit Sethi pictured this guy complains to the Brentwood Gazette that his post office contract was terminated over a mysterious £17,000 shortfall, which he blamed on the computer system. The post office said, no, we've checked it twice. There's nothing wrong with our system. And we now know that was a complete straight out and out lie. So there's that. So look, we've got Tony Blair instituting a system. He knows he's faulty. Then we've got the post office uh, maintaining a system they know is faulty. And then we've got this attack dog here who's going after a, uh, people caught in the system that he must have realised were not guilty. Or he might have realised, rather, that with so many of them suddenly becoming so dishonest, there was a problem. None of them seemed to have worked, but it gets worse. There's the prosecution service as well. I'll get to that in a minute. In 2003, the post office terminates Alan Bates's contract uh, to run his North Wales branch after a sub postmaster after he refuses to accept liability for accounting shortfalls. Then there's Lee Castleton, a former stockbroker, there's somebody who knows a bit about money, and sub-postmaster of the post office's East Bridlington branch in Yorkshire, he's sacked after refusing to cover 
nearly £23,000 in shortfalls that the Horizon said there that he had. Alan Bates writes to Computer Weekly warning people about the problems with the Horizon system. That's all in 2004. In 2006, Mr Castleton, this fellow here, he loses a high court case after challenging the accuracy of Horizon generated evidence. He's ordered to pay more than £300,000 in damages and costs and declares bankruptcy. Now, when you de declare bankruptcy, you can't start another business until you've cleared your um, debt. £300,000, how's he supposed to do that? That's a hell of a lot of money. So here we have a, a man whose business life is completely finished, whose financial um, elasticity is completely destroyed, and uh, well, basically his life is ruined. I don't know. I, I don't know much about him. But if he had children, their lives would have been ruined as well by the stress their father would have been under, uh, by prospects of you know, father helping out children, all that sort of thing, it would have all have gone. That life completely between 2004, well, right, 2004 to today, he is suffering the consequences of this dud program. Now, in 2009, and she is not, a, not the only one, Mother of two, Fiona McGowan, 47, dies from an accidental overdose after the post office charged her with fraud. They said there was £30,000 missing. Can you imagine the hell this woman was in? Now, prosecutors decided to drop the charges at some point. Obviously, they thought maybe there was something a bit odd about the uh, the evidence that the post office had supplied them with. They decided to drop the charges. They didn't tell her. Why didn't they tell her? I think that requires an inquiry as well. Why did they not tell her that she was clear? Now, she got an accidental overdose. What, I'm assuming that was sleeping pills because anyone under that sort of strain would have to take, uh, probably end up having to take sleeping pills just to get to sleep at night instead of worrying about 30,000 missing pounds that she couldn't do. Uh, she couldn't give back without selling her house under the feet of her children, no doubt. So it's quite common. Uh, it happens uh, more times than most people would care to uh, think about that somebody who's on sleeping pills takes a dose, goes to sleep, then because of unbearable pressures, wakes up in the middle of the night, thinks they haven't taken the sleeping pill and takes another dose that kills them. That, that happens. And the prosecutors didn't tell her she was free and clear. Uh, she would still have been under suspicion in her neighbourhood, but at least didn't have prison hanging over her head where she had two children. Now, um, there's a guy called Rod Ismay uh, asking about, I don't know who he is, but he's writing a report into Horizon and wrote in asking for assurance that the system's OK. So he thinks there might be something wrong. But obviously, he, it looks like he's he asked for reasons for assurance, not I think there's something wrong here. And in that same year, that is 2010, Pregnant sub-postmistress Seema Misra, everyone knows about her, but how many, there might be, there might be 900 people involved in this, so she's just one of them, but she was pregnant, and she said if she hadn't been pregnant, uh, she might have actually ended her life, as did many people. The Horizon recorded £74,000 missing that they were blaming her for. In 2012, Louise Mann, wife of a sub-postmaster, takes her own life after she and her husband are accused of theft. Postmistresses and postmasters are people who are highly trusted in their community for a reason. They are sterling, law-abiding characters. They are people who toe the line. They are people who 
have a regard for the property of others and the law. And when they are told that they have stolen £74,000, this destroys their standing in the community, their self-image and their hope for any sort of a life. She killed herself. And I lay that right up there with, on Tony Blair's doorstep because ultimately that's where the buck stops. 2013, sub-postmaster Martin Griffiths, 58, walked in front of a bus after the post office demanded he make good £61,000 uh, that uh, was deemed to be a shortfall. Now, uh, he might have done it deliberately. He might also have had his head so full of worries and concerns that he just stepped off the curb without thinking. Whatever, I'm absolutely certain that he wouldn't have stepped out in front of that bus if he didn't have £61,000 of criminal investigation hanging over his head. 2019, Alan Bates and 550 other sub-postmasters win a victory. The judge, Mr Justice Fraser, rules that Horizon contained a number of software bug bugs. Now, that was a light at the end of the tunnel, but too late for this fellow. Sub-postmaster Peter Huxham, 63, found dead in his flat. He'd been convicted of fraud in 2010, that is when he was 53, after post office bosses accused him of stealing £16,000. Now... You're 53 years old. You've just been accused of fraud. You've been convicted of fraud. I don't know whether he went to prison or not, but he's unemployable now. 53, unemployable. What? Even if he hadn't killed himself, the strain and the stress, 10 years of this hanging over his head. <laughs> It's, it's just unbelievable. The Prime Minister, his government, the post office, the prosecution services, and even their attack dogs in the, the lower reaches. Now, in 2021, the Court of Appeal exonerated 39 sub-postmasters, but of course there are many more, and has been pointed out, as has been pointed out, there are many people who just paid up and, and just kept quiet. And they're still not found. And some of them so, so traumatised, they're never going to uh, stand up, uh, own up to having been uh, at the receiving end of this stuff. It is absolutely terrible. And that is because this guy didn't want to drive Fujitsu into bankruptcy. Till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grembo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.